welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. Well, on today's show, we're going to talk a little about weed control post-emerge in corn. You have a lot of choices, but you got to be careful a little about weed resistance and also carryover. We'll explain today. Uh, the weeds are so easy, Brian. You see them, you pick the right product, you go out and kill them. With disease, it's a whole different deal. You can't wait and see it out in your field. You're already too late. You've got to be out ahead of it. We're going to talk about which fungicides may be the best prevention for your wheat fields on today's show. Coming up later in the show, we have a Weed of the Week that I would hope just about everyone can identify. We'll show you the best ways to control it, though. We also have an iron talk and a whole lot more. But first, here's this week's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk about one of the most important things a farmer needs to check in the field, that is, What's the stand count? Well, this is very interesting. If you're not farming and you say, what? Why do they have to go count plants out there? Well, let's just take corn, for example, and, and talk about why a farmer would want to do this in his field. So when a farmer's planting corn, he's going to put in, on average, 30,000 seeds per acre. He hopes each one of those seeds becomes a plant and produces an ear. So he's hoping to get 30,000 ears of corn to be able to harvest per acre. So let's start right from the beginning. He's dropping 30,000 seeds in the ground. The farmer wants to check and see, you know, did most of those 30,000 pop up? Or do I have some issues out here that I may have to come back and replant or add some more seed into my field? Regardless of what the crop is, farmers are typically out there looking at, okay, I'm gonna make a certain count here and I wanna figure out, well, how does that translate to plants per acre? So the simple way to do this in many cases is you look at what your row spacing is, do the math and figure, all right, how many feet of row or how many feet within this row do I need to count? And that's one one thousandth of an acre. This can get a little bit complicated. So to make this a little more simple, we do have an Ag PhD planting population calculator. It's a free app, free for your smartphone or your tablet. You can use that when you're out in the field to make those stand counts. So for example, say you're in a 30 inch row. Well, how far do you have to go? It's roughly 17 and a half feet. Well, you just type it into the planting calculator. It, it tells you how far you go. And then you count how many seeds are emerging and living uh, in that amount of feet. So now we've, we've only had to count 30 plants rather than 30,000 on a whole acre. You just multiply that number times 1,000 and find out what your stand count is. All right, there are two main things that farmers are looking for. One, how many plants emerged? And two, when did those plants emerge? In other words, if there's very uneven emergence, so there are some plants that are big, some plants that are small, that's not good. The small plants basically are just going to become weeds. They're not gonna produce much seed or much grain for that farmer. So those are the two things the farmer's looking at, and then it's up to him whether he wants to go out and replant part or all of a particular field. So if a farmer planted 30,000 seeds, he's got about 30,000 that came up, and they came up pretty even across the field, he's really in a good position. He's done everything he can so far to maximize yields. Now that farmer may choose to push it in that field for the highest yield possible. On the other hand, if he only got 22,000 seeds coming up per acre and the emergence is really uneven, well, this field's probably not gonna do that well and a farmer's not gonna see much return on investment really going for that extra bushel. He's just going to manage it for, well, it's gonna be an average to below average field and I'm gonna spend money accordingly. Well, once again, checking stand counts is incredibly important. That's something that farmers will do every single spring. Well, another thing that farmers will do every single spring is scout for weeds like our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you how to control this one coming up later in the show.
Leading the charge in strip tillage for more than a decade, the Soil Warrior brings the future to your farm today. Are you looking for an easy way to apply dry powdered products to your stored grain? Do you want to use the applicator recommended by industry leaders for products like Diacon D and other dry powder products? Changing Time CT applicators successfully apply a diversity of products quickly, easily, and accurately. The innovative CT applicators are designed to give you the most accurate application of products such as talc, inoculants, fertilizers, and other dry products. For commercial use or on the farm, you need the applicator industry leaders are using. CT applicators for the changing times. Avoid dry run failures with the new High Pro Force Field Pump, providing the ultimate protection. This wet seal pump will save you on costly in season downtime to keep your sprayer running. Now all you have to worry about is the weather. High Pro, helping you spray better. If you're looking to expand your farm's grain handling, you want everything to be fast and efficient. The Quick Belt from Norwood Sales is your all around grain handling solution. Our conveyor based system uses an 18 inch belt in a 10 inch tube, which minimizes seed damage while moving more than 10,000 bushels an hour. That's fast enough to fill a semi in six minutes. Plus, our hood is designed to gently direct the flow of grain straight down, keeping your crop in condition. Keep your grain and your farm moving with the Quick Belt from Norwood Sales. I know a lot of people that have them, and I don't know anybody that doesn't like their Morton building. The crew was really in my book top-notch. The quality of this building is second to none and they make sure before you walk away that you're happy. This is my dream barn. I think it ended up looking even better than I thought it would. People love it. When they get in here they're just in awe. Morton Buildings. For work, for life, for generations. Our next topic here is an interesting discussion. It's corn post-emerge herbicides. And the reason why I say it's interesting is because you can't make your post-emerge decision until you understand, hey, what am I doing for pre or what have I already put on for pre? Where I'm going with this is we are super concerned about both weed resistance and carryover. Huh. Well, of course we're concerned about weed resistance. We got big problems in soybeans. So yep. in corn, we got to clean things up and the other thing is we can't clean it up with products that are going to carry over for us into the soybeans and hurt our beans. So we want to look at this thing, if you're in a corn soybean rotation, as what's my two year plan? And if, you know what, I'm really relying on dicamba in soybeans, okay, that's fine. Let's do something different in corn. Or if I'm really relying on liberty in my soybeans, let's do a little something different in corn. And then what are we going to use as pre-emerge modes of action? Because group 15s, Brian, have historically been the base of any corn herbicide program. Now we're using group 15s at least once and sometimes twice in soybeans. We don't want to lose them for corn too. Okay, and by group 15s, where he's going, or what he means is dual, outlook, zidua, warrant, those are the products you would use in soybeans. Well, same thing in corn. Okay, so here's what I'm really concerned about, the HPPDs. I'm sure by now you realize the HPPDs have completely crashed in price. So if you look at Callisto, for example, or generic alternatives, you're talking three, four dollars an acre for the full rate. So you say, wow, I need to save money. I need to cut costs. My banker said I got to cut costs. I'm just going to go HPPD twice. Well, you can, but our recommendation is if you do, you better go back to corn. And our other recommendation is if you do, you better get prepared for HPPD resistant weeds because we've already seen some. So we just really want to encourage you, hey, if you've used an HPPD pre, forget about it, completely post-emerge. Do not use it post-emerge. All right, let's look at uh, two different scenarios here. Let's say you have no pre down and you're going to use a combination product post. You're taking a lot of risk, weeds could be big, and you have to do a great job with this pass. So looking at some of the cut rates that guys have used pre, well, if you're using that post, All right, you're so let's get trouble. specific. Get specific. What do you want them to do then post? All right, all right. well, if you're going to use... Yeah, let's say you haven't used anything pre. Yeah, you're going to go with a one-pass post. You're going to have to use a full rate to the product to make sure that you're getting weeds under control. Well, when you say full rate, though, there, there's where I'm going to disagree with you a little bit. Let's say I've got a reduced rate of four different herbicides. Let's say I've got a group 15, i got HPPD, I've got atrazine, and I throw a little dicamba with it. Well, I'm just saying right. there are a lot that, of guys doing this it combination. It absolutely happens. There's no question. Okay, let's just say that you've got HPPD resistance out there. Now you've got a reduced rate of atrazine and a reduced rate of dicamba. The group 15 has no post-emerge activity, you're not going to kill the weed. 
So yep. you've really got to look at what do you have out there and you have to have multiple modes of action that will be effective on the weed. Okay, so I'll be very specific with you here. The best post-emerge herbicide is status, period. In terms of broadleaf weed control, that's number one. And keep Problem this in mind, it, is, it has two modes of action. In. It's not just dicamba. Most people think status is dicamba, that's not it's it. It's primarily diflufenzapyr. So there's a splash of dicamba in there, but it's primarily a herbicide you don't use in any other crop. Okay, I love it, it's fantastic. Problem is, full rate's 25 bucks an acre. All right, so when you start going, hmm, I can use Status for 25, or I can use Callisto or some other HPPD for three to four. Uh, what do I think I'm gonna do? Well, you know where this is going, okay? But I'm just trying to tell you, if you tell me, I don't care what it costs, I got a complete disaster out there, I have to have great weed control, Status is the way to go. The full rate is actually seven and a half ounces. Most people are using five ounces, that costs around 16, 17 bucks. Otherwise, if you just want it as a tank mix partner, two and a half ounces is okay. That's around $8 an acre. Well, I agree with Brent. That's my favorite choice to go with status. But number two for me is go at full rate of an HPPD, then add so in So in other words, like a Callisto type product, Callisto loudest impact. Then add in an atrazine, and then throw in a low rate of dicamba with it. Maybe you're throwing in six ounces to eight ounces of clarity, depending on what you've got for weed pressure. Uh, now you've got a combination, you haven't spent much money, and it's gonna be pretty good, not as good as option one though. Yep, but if you already have HPPD resistant weeds, now you may not have enough out there to kill what you're actually after, so that would be one of my concerns with that. Okay, Darren already mentioned group 15s, throwing that in. You absolutely can do that. Just understand, they don't kill anything that's up. That's just to give you some more residual as you go a little bit later in the season. All right, finally, let's comment on some of these premixes that we started talking about at the beginning of the show. How about Resicor? What do you see there? Yep, well, I really like Resicor. It's got an HPPD. It's got uh, the active ingredient that's found in Stinger and then a group 15. So yeah, it's fine. It, it's just we got to look at how much is the cost and is it going to is it going to control my target weed? OK, how about uh, Acuron Flexi? Yep, really like that one too, but it's two different HPPDs and a group 15. So you only have that HPPD for post-emerge activity. If it was me and I was concerned about resistance, I would throw a little dicamba or atrazine with it. Okay, how about uh, Armazon Pro? Uh, I don't really like Armazon Pro that well, just the ratio of products in there. A lot of group 15, lower rate of uh, Armazon, the HPPD, so I'm probably not going that direction unless I spike it with a little HPPD or bump the rate. All right, finally, one last one, Halex GT. Yep, this was super popular about two, three years ago, but the cost hasn't come down as much as it probably needs to. Uh, in, anyway, I, I, I like it, it's fine. It's got glyphosate in there in addition to an HPPD and dual. Uh, so it's okay, but here again, you know, you don't have anything post-emerge if you're worried, uh-oh, I'm, I'm concerned to have HPPD resistance. Well, there's certainly a lot of choices when it comes to post-emerge weed control in corn. You want to do a great job in your corn, so when you rotate back to soybeans, you've got a clean field to start with. So the key thing is use multiple modes of action and use something with a little residual if you can. All these rules apply to our Weed of the Week as well. We'll show you what controls this tough weed later in the show. Introducing the SoilMax ZD48, the newest addition to the SoilMax Gold Digger lineup. The first plow designed for smaller class tractors, the ZD48 has been tested on tractors weighing between 10,000 and 16,000 pounds with excellent results. Designed for row crop farms, vineyards, irrigation, and specialty crop farms. The SoilMax ZD48 will install tile up to 48 inches deep as well as install 3 or 4 inch tile. The ZD48 truly opens up the world of tile installation to more farms than ever before. The buzz on this line is probably the best in 10 years, both in soil and in the plant. Joe, you've been doing this for a while. What's your take? Well, Don, you take a player like high energy in, three forms of nitrogen, plus sulfur and iron with slow release technology, he's making plays all season long. Oh, look at his numbers. He's getting it done. But don't forget about in response. This guy's designed for a quick release nitrogen. It's looking like another championship season for Agro Liquid. Unlock your nutrient investment with QuickRoots technology. It contains two powerful microbes that can help free nutrients bound in your soil, which can improve access to key nutrients for healthy crops, N, P, and K. Applying QuickRoots technology to seed can lead to improved root and shoot growth, increased yield potential, and maximized nutrient investment. See how you can make your fertilizer dollar go further at MonsantoBioAg.com slash QuickRoots. In 
life, when you put the max in, you get the max out. It's no different for your corn, which is why 40 years of effort have gone into proving that Instinct and Enserve nitrogen stabilizers do more than just stabilize nitrogen. They maximize nitrogen. So your corn gives you the max in return. Take a look inside any rotary combine, and you'll find single rotor technology. Technology Case IH had reduced over 35 years ago with the Axial Flow Combine. But unless it gives you more bells and whistles with fewer belts and chains, more power using less fuel, it's not an Axial Flow. Because while the heart of every rotary combine beats red, only Case IH gives you the power to do more. strongly recommend the use of fungicides in wheat, but the question is, when are you going to spray those fungicides? Well, today we're going to talk about the earliest timing. That would be together with herbicide, or what we would call herbicide timing. When we look at early season disease issues in wheat, they're pretty common. It's just a question of how bad are they going to get, how far up the plant are they going to spread. If we've got an early season stressor, now every other stress we pile on top of it, really compounds and gets even worse. So I want to eliminate as much stress as I can all the way through the season. That's why this early fungicide app really pays more times than not on our farm and many other farms around the country. Okay, let's get a little more specific here. We're after tan spot and a few other early season diseases. The whole thing is, in terms of wheat plants in general, they're not very disease tolerant. Okay, they have some tolerance, but it's not great. Just think about what you're dealing with here. We've got a very thick stand in most cases. It's trapping moisture. Every morning you walk out there, there's dew on the leaves. Those conditions are just ripe for disease happening almost every single year. Plus the fact that when the plant is really small, you can get by in most cases with a low rate in very often, this is right on the label even, they'll tell you, hey, early on you can spray something like a half rate. Okay, so if you're going to be out there spraying herbicide already, you're only going to have to spend 3 to $5 an acre. Why would you not throw it in there? Because in most cases, guys are gaining two, three, four, five bushels of wheat. This is something that on average really should pay in most situations. All right, so it comes down to which products you're going to do. If you say, yeah, okay, I'm in, I'm in, I'll, I'll go ahead and do this. Which products do I use now? Well, there are some really cheap generics out there that are pretty tempting. When you look at, at Tilt, when that went off patent, and, and there's tons of generic propiconazoles out there, boy, they're about as cheap as they come. The question is, two bucks an acre. do they really work? You know, at $2 an acre, if I spend another dollar or if I spend another couple bucks, I can get a second mode of action. Uh, what am I going to gain with that? Well, you're going to get a much broader spectrum of diseases controlled. You're also going to help avoid resistance issues. And I think that's uh, a couple of real key points here for using either a combination premix or if you're going to go the cheap generic route, at least mix two different modes of action in there, uh, a strobe and also one of the triazoles to try to get as many of these diseases under control as possible. The number one product we're probably talking about right now is Nexacor because it's only around five bucks an acre for the labeled rate at herbicide timing. What you get there is a strobe, the headline basically, a triazole, and an SDHI. Now you can get something fairly similar with Trivapro, costs just a little bit more money. So either way you go, Nexacor, Trivapro, you've got three modes of action. That, either way, that's our number one recommendation. Now if you want to go down to two modes of action, that'd be our second choice. You can certainly do that, plenty of options there. Uh, there's, there's Quilt, there's Quilt XL, there's Stratego Yield. You, you've got a lot of choices. All right, let's talk about length of control here because this is one thing I don't want any mistakes on that, well, hey, I sprayed a fungicide, I should be good now in my field. Well, you just protected the leaves that were out at the time you sprayed the fungicide. So as that plant continues to put on new leaves every week, guess what? They're unprotected. That fungicide doesn't move that much in the plant. That's why when we get to flag leaf, we're going to talk fungicide again. That's going to be the next opportunity uh, where we can really improve or protect yield and also deal with plant health issues that may come up. We can strengthen the plant health by putting on another fungicide application at flag leaf. So we're doing something now that's going to get us by for at least a few weeks in the growing season. Once again, we really, really encourage you use fungicides in your wheat. You should get plant health benefits. You should get decent disease control. Our number one recommendation is use a product that has three modes of action at herbicide timing.
Fungicides are great for preventing disease, but they do nothing for our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? The Weed of the Week is brought to you by Dow AgroSciences. Finish the fight against tough weeds with the Enlist Weed Control System. Weeds are tough. But we're tougher. With unrivaled weed control. Reduced drift. And near zero volatility. So, who's tough now? <laughs> Our Weed of the Week is Volunteer Roundup Ready Soybeans. Well, okay, let's let's look at it this way, Brian. Let's say it's Roundup Ready Soybeans, or it could be Liberty Link Soybeans, or it could be, you know, one of these new stacks that's coming. If you've got Volunteer Soybeans coming up over the next few years, who knows what the trait package is going to be out there, right? It could be about anything if you're planting those traits on your farm. So, if you aren't sure what the trait package is in those soybeans, then the number one suggestion we would have for you in terms of killing volunteer soybeans in corn would be status post-emerge. Unfortunately, it's also the most expensive choice, but because of the difufens okay, appear in okay. there, there is absolutely not a soybean on the planet that's resistant to that. Well, I'll say this though, when you've got extend soybeans, for example, and you spray status on them, uh, it's going to hurt them really bad and kill most of them. Uh, if you don't get great coverage, you may not kill all of them. So if you can get uh, out there, I think there, you're going to kill all of them. If you can get out there <laughs> early, that would be a good way to do it to make sure you get really good coverage. Uh, but it's it's different. You say, oh, I've got dicamba talent beans. Remember that diflufenzapyr is the killing portion of status. Okay, so in terms of anything else you're going to use, yes, if the plants are not tolerant to dicamba, then dicamba is great. That's our number one choice. When enlist soybeans come out, uh, hey, now we potentially could spray 2,4-D on those beans. We could spray Liberty on those beans. The question guys are starting to ask is, well, does a dicamba kill a 2,4-D tolerant soybean? The answer is absolutely yes. All right, when we go to wheat, we have no issues. We've got lots of choices of products that we're going to be using out there, like Husky or Talonor would do a pretty good job on volunteer soybeans. Or Sharpen Down. Yes. Sharpen Down would be really good too. Yep, Sharpen as a burn down will kill everything that's up. Well, that's all the time we have for our Weed of the Week volunteer Roundup Ready soybeans. But our Iron Talk is coming up next. Introducing the SoilMax ZD48, the newest addition to the SoilMax Gold Digger lineup. The first plow designed for smaller class tractors, the ZD48 has been tested on tractors weighing between 10,000 and 16,000 pounds with excellent results. Designed for row crop farms, vineyards, irrigation, and specialty crop farms. The SoilMax ZD48 will install tile up to 48 inches deep as well as install 3 or 4 inch tile. The ZD48 truly opens up the world of tile installation to more farms than ever before. This agro liquid line is something special. A lot of really impressive playmakers. Take a look at Sure K. This guy is an enigma. But wrap your head around the exceptionally high plant response when compared to conventional potassium sources, the research proven plant availability, plus flexible application options and mixing capabilities. Really stellar performance stats. Sure K is a true standout, and that's a winning goal on any field. Unlike your nutrient investment with Quick Roots technology, it contains two powerful microbes that can help free nutrients bound in your soil, which can improve access to key nutrients for healthy crops, N, P, and K. Applying Quick Roots technology to seed can lead to improved root and shoot growth, increased yield potential, and maximized nutrient investment. See how you can make your fertilizer dollar go further at MonsantoBioAg.com slash Quick Roots. 
I know a lot of people that have them and I don't know anybody that doesn't like their Morton building. The crew was really in my book top notch. The quality of this building is second to none and they make sure before you walk away that you're happy. This is my dream barn. I think it ended up looking even better than I thought it would. People love it. When they get in here, they're just in awe. Morton Buildings, for work, for life, for generations. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. Take a look inside any rotary combine and you'll find single rotor technology. Technology Case IH introduced over 35 years ago with the Axial Flow Combine. But unless it gives you more bells and whistles with fewer belts and chains, more power using less fuel, it's not an Axial Flow. Because while the heart of every rotary combine beats red, only Case IH gives you the power to do more. For farmers in the northern U.S., right now may be the optimum time to add drain tile to fields. I'll explain in today's Iron Talk. Owning your own tile plow is pretty handy sometimes, especially when you have some problem areas in your fields. Fixing iron deficiency chlorosis spots or alkali areas is a great example. When you have an area where water sits on the soil surface for a few extra days after a rain, you could be setting yourself up for a buildup of salts, carbonates, and nitrates, as well as a high and rising soil pH. In many cases, improving the drainage will solve the problem for the long term. However, when are you going to get the work done? Post-harvest is the optimum time, but some years that window is pretty short before the soil freezes up and the snow starts to fly. For those reasons and more, we've actually put a majority of our drain tile in fields during the crop season. I get it. You don't want to tear up a nice crop or leave a mess for the combine to negotiate around in the fall. But here's how we do it on our farm and why it may be worth considering on your farm too. Just like everyone else around us, we push to get the crop in as early as we can. Typically, we plant all the corn, then all the beans, but after that, we get started on tiling. We go into cornfields until the corn is about 12 inches tall. Then we'll switch to soybean fields until they get about a foot tall. After that, wheat harvest is just around the corner, and once that comes off, we can tile those areas as needed too. We aren't doing 15-foot pattern tile spacings in crop. In some cases, we may just get the mains in or limit our tiling to a problem area that drowned out. With 30-inch row crop, our disturbance is minimal, and we've yet to see it show up as a negative on the yield map. As for harvesting in the fall, we've got the whole growing season, hopefully with some rain, for things to settle back down. But yes, we will have to be careful in those areas where soil is mounded up where the tile lines went in. The benefits are awesome of tiling in crop. We get the tiling done sooner, and jumping in a hole to make a connection is a whole lot more fun when the weather is warm and getting wet is actually not a negative. If you've got tiling to do, I'd suggest you take a look at tiling in crop this year to get things done quicker on your farm. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. Well, that's our time for today, but before we go, we want to invite you to tune into the Ag PhD radio show. We take your live phone calls each weekday talking about agronomy topics or really anything going on on your farm. It's on Sirius XM channel 147 at 2 p.m. Central. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD.